Let's get into the things that are happening around the National Football League. And I'll tell you what, one of, the, one of the big questions the Texans will do with Sean Watson, we've talked about whether or not Russell Wilson wants out of Seattle. There's another quarterback out there, and I don't know that franchise quarterback is the right term. He was an MVP finalist, if not the presumptive MVP winner in 2017 before he tore his ACL in December of that year against the Rams. Nick Foles comes in, obviously, and leads the Eagles to a Super Bowl win. But Carson Wentz, with that $33.5 million contract, the Eagles ready to move on. Wentz ready to move on. There seemed to be a week and a half ago, Peter, a strong idea that they were going to get a deal done. And now it's just crickets. And no one can figure out where this is. And I think the bottom line is the Eagles just aren't getting what they think they should. And so they're waiting. And I have no idea how long they're going to be waiting. But they're content to wait, at least for now unless and until someone gives them what they're looking for. It really is crazy that 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 they can't get this done. Wentz is motivated, and at least the Colts would assume to be motivated. I think the big problem is it's just the Colts, that there really isn't another serious suitor, so it's just a waiting game between the Colts and the Eagles at this point. Man, I'd be really surprised if the Bears were not serious about him. Very surprised. You know, you've got John DeFilippo uh, in, you know, the passing game coordinator now. He's been promoted in in the ears of the general manager, Ryan Pace, and the coach, Matt Nagy. Uh, I'd just be very surprised if he wasn't pushing. You know, they had a great relationship in 2017 in the year that the uh, the Eagles won the Super Bowl. And, you know, the two guys who were there who were really significant uh, in Carson Wentz's rise that year. Obviously, Frank Wright, the offensive coordinator, now in Indianapolis. John DeFilippo, uh, you know, in Chicago, and he had been the quarterback coach. So I, I still believe it's going to come down to those two teams, Mike. But if you're Howie Roseman, you're sitting here right now, and you've got 30 days until uh, you get to the start of the next league year. You've got to trade Carson Wentz by day three of the league year because then, if you haven't traded him by then, he would be due a $10 million roster bonus. So you look at this situation, you ask yourself, well, you know, what's holding everybody up? And naturally, what's holding everybody up is the value because Carson Wentz has not been great since 2017. Now, he's been good uh, often in 18 and 19, but he just came off a year when he played at a Trubisky level. And so you can't just automatically sit there and say, I'm going to give you a one and a four for this guy. It's, it's more complicated than that. But if you're Howie Roseman, I look at it and you say, what's the rush? Let's just, let's just hang out and wait. You don't get anything. You don't get extra credit if you make the trade a month before you have to. And coincidentally, the one in the four that you mentioned was the package that the Eagles got in 2016 for Sam Bradder, then with the Vikings, suffered the catastrophic knee injury, non-contact. It's always non-contact for a quarterback at practice unless, unless contact happens accidentally, but it was clearly non-contact. Season over, Vikings cough up the one in the four for Bradford at a time when Bradford was poised to be the week one starter with Carson Wentz, then a rookie on the bench. But the Eagles waited and waited and waited and waited and waited to the point where we didn't even know they were still waiting. And that offer falls into their laps. Now, I don't think you can bank on a quarterback suffering a catastrophic knee injury and all of a sudden there's a belated market for Carson Wentz. And I think the key is, and this is where you have to get Jeffrey Lurie fully on board with the approach. Because as you mentioned, March 19, $10 million roster bonus. It's already guaranteed. Whoever has that contract is paying it. But... The, the check gets cut on the 19th. That's $10 million out of your pocket. And, and if you're the Eagles, because, I, I, Peter, I feel like because of what the Lions got for Matthew Stafford, I feel like the Eagles feel compelled to come away from this with a better deal. I, it, it occurred to me yesterday, could they just pay the $10 million and then fold that money into the trade request and you get more for Carson Wentz at that point? Because you've already paid $10 million of the dollars that he's due to make. 
So then when it's done, you can say to anybody who may say you didn't get enough, well, look at what we got. Well, one of the reasons you got what you got is because you paid him the $10 million and his new team didn't have to. I think it's a good point, Mike, and I think it's, a, it's logical. But I'll tell you, if you're the acquiring team and you make a trade on, you know, April 30th or, or April 25th for Carson Wentz, I mean... Why should you be the ones to pay for a bad contract? You're already right. paying a lot more than you want to. That $10 million, in my opinion, should be the Eagles' penalty for 18 months ago paying Carson Wentz too soon. Get for him, which is going to be less than what they would have gotten if they had traded him after the 2018 season and kept Nick Foles instead something that some suggested they should seriously consider. And I never got the impression that they seriously considered it. See, the problem is they gave up so much to get him in 2016. They weren't going to keep Foles over him after the 2018 season because they believed he was their guy. And then they paid him to get themselves even deeper into this. And, and that it amazes me that they are willing to extricate and not keep him. Part of it may be he just wants out and they know it's impractical to, to keep a franchise quarterback in place who doesn't want to be with the franchise anymore. But this is not the time to be trading him. I know that the Eagles believe that this is similar to Ben Roethlisberger's third season, 2006, which was a regression. He recovered from it quickly. Peyton Manning's fourth season of 2001, the Jim Mora playoffs year. Mora got fired. Uh, Peyton Manning significantly regressed that year. He recovered. But you're going to give up significant draft pick compensation on the hope, on the chance, on the roll of the dice, status quo for Carson Wentz. That's the problem, Peter. They always told me buy low and sell high. The Eagles are trying to sell low. I, I, you know, I can't buy any of the arguments that they would make because this past year, you know, Mike, there were 36 qualifiers in the NFL, uh, 36 quarterbacks qualified, you know, playing a minimal amount, uh, throwing a minimal amount of passes. 36 qualified uh, for the uh, passer rating in the National Football League. And Carson Wentz was 35th, and he was one-tenth of a point ahead of Sam Darnold. So I, I'm, not, I'm not buying the... Well, you know, Roethlisberger was lousy in his third year, too, and, and all this. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not buying it. Even though Roethlisberger in his third year had a negative uh, uh, touchdown-to-interception ratio, he didn't hit rock bottom the way Carson Wentz just did. And in addition to that, there are also all the stories about how he became very difficult to coach, how you couldn't really tell him anything, and how he reacted very adversely and, and, you know, look, I think I said this maybe a month ago on our show, Mike, but Bucky Brooks of NFL.com had the absolute perfect take when Adam Schefter reported that Carson Wentz is angry. Oh, you don't want to make Carson Wentz angry. Bucky Brooks said, you know what? Getting appointed a starting quarterback in the NFL is not a lifetime appointment. And Carson Wentz thought it was. And he, he's got, he was in for a rude surprise. So, so why then would the Bears even think about this? I understand John DiFilippo has the history and They're I don't know desperate. how much heft he has in the organization. Yeah, but, but Peter, th think about this from both sides. If you're the Bears and you just went through the Mitchell Trubisky experience and they're never going to let you forget locally that you could have taken – Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson instead you trade up to get Trubisky and the Bears fans have been waiting for a franchise quarterback since Sid Luckman and you bring a guy to town like first of all how are Bears fans going to react my guess is they're going to be dubious at best about the possibility of Carson Wentz taking over and it's only going to go downhill from there if he stinks right out of the gates and then if you're Wentz if you're Wentz and you just got out of Philly alive do you really want to step into Chicago at a time when it's not you up know to damn you. well if you have any well well it is up to you if you make it known you don't want to play for the Bears. If I'm the Bears and I know this guy doesn't want to play for me, I don't want him. 
even without a no-trade clause, I don't want a franchise quarterback who already has a history of being a little entitled. And there were there were stories about Carson Wentz and his failure to to you know establish the right connection with his teen old, and he was arrogant. That was pre the 2019 season. Those reports came out from unnamed sources, and when he addressed it, he legitimized it, and he said he's trying to get better. So I just think there's too many questions with Carson Wentz, and I think Chicago is a disaster waiting to happen. And trust me, we root for disasters in this business. It's good to have dysfunction. Dysfunction sells. But I don't think it's good for anybody for Wentz to go to Chicago. I think that at the end of the day, the Colts are the only team that makes sense, and that's why they're having a hard time reaching a consensus because – Chris Ballard, the GM of the team, can sit back with his arms folded and just wait for Howie to call and say, all right, fine, I'll take your offer. And it was Ron Jaworski last week, the Eagles great, who got a Super Bowl ring from the team when they finally won the Super Bowl. That's how much affection they have for him. He goes on uh, TV or or somewhere, he said that all the Colts have offered is two second-round draft picks for Carson Wentz, and that's why the deal isn't done. And and I think think two second-round picks, considering the contract you're taking on, I think two second round picks is a damn good deal. And the Eagles, if it's on the table, should jump on it. Mike, you know what's a, what is one of the most laughable concepts imaginable in football today? And there are many of them. And that is that the 35th rated quarterback in the NFL in 2020 says he wants to be traded. And when... Uh, he is traded or or they're closing in on a trade with the Chicago Bears if that ever happens. If the 35th rated quarterback in the NFL says, whoa, 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 I'm not going to Chicago. I mean, is that the ultimate, the ultimate overplaying of your hand, the ultimate overplaying of who in the world do you think you are? You know, if you request a trade, and you come off a year where you're awful. You just, you know, I, I don't, this is going to sound dramatic. I mean, just shut up and go be good somewhere. <laughs> I don't care if you get well, traded to Saskatchewan. It's ridiculous to, to even right. think that he would do that. But it's consistent with the mindset that's led us to where we are now. The fact that he was threatened by Jalen Hurts when Jay Glazer of Fox reported during the season, it messed him up having Hurts there when they use a second-round pick on Jalen Hurts, that, that that sapped his confidence. And then what did we hear throughout the back end of the season? He wants out. He wants out. Relationships fractured with Doug Peterson. Okay, Peterson's gone. He still wants out. So if the guy's willing to, with the team that has paid him all that money, with the team that's tried to make him into a franchise quarterback, if he's willing to show attitude with them and he's been there for five years now, why would he not hesitate? to show or why would he hesitate to show attitude with a team that he's never played for I don't want to play for the Bears I I I don't given what we know and given where we are right now with Carson Wentz I don't think it's a stretch at all for him to make it known through his agent through whoever to the Bears that you're probably going to regret this if you do it because he doesn't want to play for you and if and if they told me that right on one hand oh and this is this is the this is the confluence of old school football George Young too bad. You tell him tough crap, right? He doesn't determine where he plays or who he plays for. He signed a contract and they trade it and he ter- they trade it here. He's got to live with it. New school, we better be careful because we don't want a starting quarterback who doesn't want to be here. It's it's another example of this ongoing effort by quarterbacks to to flex their muscles, Peter. Maybe it's still it still would be the gall of the year uh for that to happen. Mike, let me ask you a question, because this intrigues me when I hear what Ron Jaworski said. What would you rather have? Would you rather have the Colts' next two second-round picks, which I believe would be about 53rd and then whatever it is in 2022? So let's just say about the 50th pick in the next two drafts, or would you like to have the 21st pick? pick this year what would you take if I offered that to you well given the lack of a scouting combine given that that this year is going to be even more of a crapshoot than last year was when it comes to drafting talent I, I probably would rather have two lottery tickets instead of one 
And and because I know the second one, I'm going to have a better chance to have an idea what's under the metallic paint than I am under this one. Uh, so I'd rather have two. I'd, I'd always rather have more than less. But obviously, the earlier you pick, the better. But I just, it's going to be a challenge this year with no scouting combine. It's going to be a challenge this year. Teams are going to, the reason, teams are going to have to make their, the their reason, assessments based on what's on film. I, I'll tell you this. The reason any day of the week I would rather have two twos right now at this point in time. You just mentioned it, Mike. There is really no sure thing anymore, you know, because you're going to do a lot of scouting. You're going to have fewer games to scout on this year than you did a year ago. And to me, it's one of the reasons why I believe that John Schneider didn't have that much of a fear about trading his next two ones for Jamal Adams because he figured that they were both going to be somewhere 25, 28 in the next two years. And, you know, really, why wouldn't you take a sure thing? But I'll tell you this. While, when I asked that question, I wanted to look it up. Okay, and so I'm just going to tell you right now, the picks, <coughs> excuse me, right around 50 to 55. Okay, and I'm going to go down to 49. Pittsburgh, Chase Claypool, 49. Los Angeles Rams, Cam Akers, 52. Philadelphia, number 53, Jalen Hurts. Baltimore, number 55, J.K. Dobbins. Okay, so you look at all that and you look at a lot of the guys that got picked right in that area. And then I could go up and, and look higher around 20 and just say, I'd rather have two lottery tickets exactly as you would say. So if I were the Eagles, I might say, uh, you throw in a five, two twos and a five, and, I'll, and we'll make that deal. I might rather have that deal than if Chicago traded me the 20th pick in the draft. Another thing I'd like to have, too, and I wish this got used more often. I think teams don't want to tie up a range of draft picks because, let's say, for example, someone would offer the Eagles 2022 compensation based on Carson Wentz's performance or the number of games he plays in or the team's performance, whatever formula you come up with. You have a second pick that is driven by what you get from Carson Wentz in 2021, but the problem is that team would then have maybe two all the way down to five. You couldn't trade it. You couldn't move it because you have to hold on to it because you don't know what you're ultimately going to be giving the Eagles after Carson Wentz's first year with the team. That gives everyone some protection. I just think that's fair, especially with a player who has question marks. And Carson Wentz has plenty of question marks. So if he comes in and he's a superstar, I'll give you a first-round pick in 2022. If he's the league MVP or if we win the Super Bowl, take my first-round pick. And if he, if he plays half of the games, you get my fifth-round pick. That's fair, but teams won't do it because they don't want to tie their hands for you know their entire draft if they have a broad range, if they have a formula that could have anywhere from pick one all the way down to pick five, six, or seven that goes to a team. But that, that's the fair way to do it, compensation-based on the performance of the player, especially for a guy like this, when the Eagles are trying to sell the idea that 2020 was some sort of an aberration, Peter. I, you know, I think that's smart, Mike. But the one thing that I would say is that you're already, de if, if you traded, let's say, a two in this year's draft and then a conditional something in 2022, remember, you're already devaluing uh, the pick. You've got to take some risk when you make a trade like this. Because if you do get the Carson Wentz of 2017, then think of how cheap you're getting him, even for a two and a middle to low one. So anyway, I look, I think the Indianapolis Colts obviously are interested in Carson Wentz. Frank Reich loves him. So, but I, I guess the overarching thing I would say is there's no hurry. There's a month. They got a month to go. If we're still talking about this, it's February 15th. If we're still talking about this on March 15th, that's when you know you should be concerned. The problem is, frankly, there was a sense that was created a week and a half ago that it was imminent, and that may have the Colts to overdo yeah. it now. This idea that the Bears were getting ready to send a first-round pick and Nick Foles and Tariq Cohen to the Eagles – that may have been an effort to try to get the Colts to jump because I think what the Eagles would like to do is just be done with this. 
We got other things to worry about. We just want to get this done. But patience may be the thing that gets them to where they ultimately want to be. And where that's going to be is Jalen Hurts most likely the starter. They're firm believers in having a second quarterback. And I don't rule out a separate transaction with the Bears that would bring Nick Foles back to town as the backup to Jalen Hurts. That would make it his third stint with the team. But just another one of the many stops on the quarterback carousel that's already spinning and will continue to do so for weeks, if not months. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.